Hey everyone, I am your astrologer Wonder Girl taking you to new heights. This is your astrology horoscope for the new moon in Scorpio, which happens on Sunday, November 15th, 2020 at 12.06 a.m. Eastern Time or Saturday, November 14th, 2020 at 9.06 p.m. Pacific Time, depending upon which part of the country that you're in or really the world. Now, what I think this new moon is really all about is about us rising from the ashes, rising from the ashes of a hard past year and a half, past five years, past seven years, past 35 years. It's about us finally rising from the ashes like the phoenix and being reborn as an entirely new person, remade, healthier, better, stronger. It's about us doing that, starting, really starting that process so that we can move on in a very different way, breaking those spells and breaking the bonds of our past that has kept us stuck for so long. And I think it's beautiful. I think this new moon is a really strong, really powerful, really empowering one that is going to help us, especially by the end of this month, this lunar month, uh, step into uh, our power and our value and our worth and create something really different than what we've been doing before. That's really beautiful. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you want to hear more about that, please stay tuned because I'm going to talk about it right now. <laughs> and to talk about it, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to place where this new moon is on the chart so that you can see it and so that you can follow along with me. So I'm going to do that now. What is a new moon? A new moon is when the sun and the moon are conjunct. Um, and we have that right here in the chart, the sun and the moon at the same exact degree, 23 degrees and the same exact sign Scorpio. Okay, what are new moons all about? New moons are all about new beginnings, fresh starts. Um, new beginnings and fresh starts that are going to be with us for at least the next four weeks until the next new moon occurs, but in many cases last even longer, till about six, six months later, till the next full moon occurs in that sign. Um, but the important point here. Um, is really not all that stuff is the fact that this is a new thing that is being born that we're starting and a new theme that we're trying to work out or have more of the boost to work out at this time. Okay, what do we have the, the boost to begin to work out to work through Scorpio? What does Scorpio have to do with? Quite a few things. Scorpio to me as a sign of change and transformation, deep personal change and transformation. So what is going on in very general broad terms at this new moon in Scorpio is that we're getting a new boost, a new start here to change our lives more permanently and to transform, not just this little change. We're not talking about mutable sign change. Scorpio, fixed sign, deep change to remake, to remake our entire selves. Scorpio even has a lot to do with our DNA, if you will, to totally like restructure our entire DNA, our entire soul's code, the way that we see ourselves feel about our lives from the inside out so that we can move on. Okay, big changes are afoot. I will say that this month that have been a long time coming. What else does Scorpio have to do with? Not only does Scorpio have to do with deep, intense change and transformation within the depths of our soul, but it also has to do with emotions. Scorpio is a water sign um, as well. So it also has to do with us um, working out some emotional stuff too so that we can move forward. What else is Scorpio about? Scorpio to me, uh, ruling our sex organs, also has a lot to do with what we deeply want, what we deeply desire, what turns us on in some way. So another thing as well that we're um, working out at this new moon too is, is how we can... Um, um, renew our desire towards life, towards things in our life that is going on, or how we can create more of a life that we want and desire. So another thing that we're working out during this time period, not just not just at this new moon in Scorpio, are we changing our life and who we are and our emotions and our DNA in order to move forward in a different way, but we're trying to change deeply who it is that we are so that we can connect more to our lives, more fully and more deeply and be more turned on by life and like life in better ways and more desire where it is that we are than we have been before. Okay. Other things that Scorpio has to do with Scorpio is the sign of sex, death, and taxes. Those are like the, the stereotypes that you always get with Scorpio. Okay. What are sex, death, and taxes? To me, those are the things that you're not supposed to talk about at a dinner party. <laughs> um, 
And here we are, a new moon in Scorpio right before a full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini two weeks from now. So another thing that this new moon in Scorpio is about is not just about deep transformation in the depths of our soul and in the depths of our emotions to be a different person and to finally create more of a life that we truly want, that we truly feel connected to, that we're more excited about, that we've been about in a while. But it's also about us talking about taboo things, talking about hard things, hard things. <laughs> with ourselves and with other people so that we can work through them, so that we can work through the emotional stuff, work through the taboos, work through another Scorpio word, our shadows. Scorpio is all the dark stuff. Scorpio has to do with all that dark stuff that no one likes to talk about. Okay. Another thing about this new moon in Scorpio is not only are we changing who we are on the inside, our emotions, our DNA, so that we can live more of a life that we want and feel more fully connected to, but we are also talking about the hard things, the hard things, the shadow sides, the deep emotional junk that we don't want to talk about. We're talking about those hard things so that we can make this change occur, so that we can get it going, so that we can move forward in this better way that it is that we need another important thing. What else is Scorpio about? Relationships. Scorpio is a relationship sign being on this side of the Zodiac, right? This to me, these are like the relationship signs, um, being opposite, you know, Aries and onwards. So what else does Scorpio have to do with relationships? So another thing that we're doing at this new moon in Scorpio is not just changing ourselves and who we are, deeply so that we can more fully connect to our life and create a different life that we really want. All right, not only are we dealing with our shadows and dealing with our darkness, the darkest parts of ourselves and talking about it, but we're also talking about it with relationships and working through these deep, intense, emotional things with relationships, with relationships so that we can come out on the other side, come out on the other side, being remade as a different person. They're related. We can't just be a different person without the relationship stuff. Scorpio knows that. Scorpio knows that relationships are an important part of life, that they're interconnected, <laughs> that we're interconnected with everything else. So not only does it bring it together, because this is a big deal. This new moon of Scorpio is a big deal. So not only at this new moon of Scorpio are we changing ourselves inside and out so that we can live a life we more fully desire and connect with, but we're also changing our relationships fundamentally, who is in our lives and how we work with relationships, how we approach about with relationships so that we can do relationships also in a different way that we're more turned on by, that we more like, that are much better for us. Okay, and how are we doing that? By talking about our shadows, by talking about these deep things that we don't want to talk about or that we were told not to talk about when we were younger by other people. You know, we're doing that as well. Okay, what else is Scorpio about? The last interpretation I'll give you before I bring more things together. Money. Scorpio is also about money, sex, death, taxes. It's also about that as well. So what else could we be doing at this new moon in Scorpio as well as working some money stuff out, working some money stuff out with relationships, working some money stuff out within our own lives so that we can feel better, pay off some debts, karmic and otherwise, pay off some debts, wash our hands of some old stuff and move on in a different and much better way. All right. And that's what I'll say there. Before I move forward, what is this new moon in Scorpio about? I think you got the picture. I think you got the picture, but I'm going to say it again, especially because my brain's still a little fuzzy from Mercury retrograde the past little bit. So I'm going to say it again. What is this new moon in Scorpio all about? It is about us deeply, permanently transforming in the depths of our being to overcome old stuff and to be someone different that's better, that we like, with a life we more fully desire and more fully connect to. Okay, not only are we changing deeply who we are, but we're also changing deeply who our relationships are, how we think about relationships, how we feel about relationships, and how we interact with them to match this different, better version of ourselves that's coming into the picture so that we can want those. Okay, not only are we changing our relationships, but we're also as well changing our finances, paying off some debts, rearranging our money as well so that we can also overcome old things and move forward with ourselves and with relationships in a better way. I think feeling more free about some things, okay? And not only are we doing that at this time period, but we are also having the thoughts, having the conversations about the darkest parts of our soul that we're trying to change, we're trying to overcome with other people so that we can make this happen, so that we can pay off the debts, fix the money, get the relationship stuff in order, and ourselves turn a corner, turn a corner and move on in a different way, all right?
So that's what I'll say there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards in time, back in time, in order to give you more of the context about how we got here to this point and why this new moon is so necessary, so important, and so big. All right. And to do that, I'm going to go back to our good friends, our good friends. Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter, which have been um, conjunct in Capricorn for quite some time, which is a very rare alignment and a very, very hard one. Okay, and what has this alignment been about? Well, especially with Saturn and Pluto, this has been about us trying to change Pluto, the structure of our lives, Saturn, to be something new and different, and ideally better. <laughs> to change our lives to be something new, different, and better that it has not been in quite some time, that it has not been for, what, 35 years prior to this point. For some of us, we were never alive then, <laughs> to change our lives to be something different than it's ever been since we were born. For those of us who weren't alive, you're still a part of this change. It just means your life's going to turn to be something you've never experienced before, okay? Why are we changing our lives here? Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn to be something different than it's been either ever before or in 35 years. We are changing our lives since April 2019 until now to be different because what our lives were before April of 2019, we either just did not like, they just sucked, bad things happened to us <laughs> and they weren't that pleasant and we want to get out of that, or we're changing our lives because what, it, what our lives were the past 35 years, we just have outgrown and they don't resonate with us anymore in the way that we might like. Okay, and I believe, I believe <laughs> that we have done it. I do, I believe that we have done it, especially a month ago at the new moon in Libra. Something came up around a month ago at the new moon in Libra. We did it. A month ago at the new moon in Libra, right about here, we did it. We were able to make this change that we've been trying to make since April 2019 to turn our lives around to be something different and better, to be something that it wasn't in the past that now is going to help us move forward in the ways that it is that we need. Okay, We started to see it manifest. And not only a month ago, the new moon in Libra, did we start to see some change that we've been trying to get to since April 2019 start to manifest, but we also fixed a lot of the blockages that were keeping us stuck with these old people that were holding us down in these old places and these old things. And because last month we started to see these changes since April 2019 to remake our lives, to be better and different, finally start to happen. And because we fixed the blockages, now we get to new moon in Scorpio. Transformation time. Transformation time. Now it is the time to see in its fullness, to see in its fullness the change that we've been trying to get to since April 2019 actually happen, actually occur. Not just a little bit. That's how Libra was, the new moon in Libra. Just a little bit. Not just a little bit, but a lot. To see it occur a lot. To see it occur more fully. To see it occur more permanently. Okay? Because Libra where the new moon was a month ago. Libra likes to do things balanced. Libra likes to weigh things out. Libra's kind of indecisive. Do I do this? Do I not do this? Maybe, yes. How does it work? Scorpio doesn't do that. Scorpio says, I want this or I don't. This turns me on or it doesn't. Yes or, yes or no, no in between. So the thing that kind of happened at the new moon in Libra last month, maybe, maybe things are gonna shift in my life. Maybe they're not gonna shift. Maybe, maybe my life is gonna change that I've been trying to make a change in the past. Maybe not. This new moon in Scorpio says, now it happens. Now it happens more, more fully, more deeply. Now I want it now. Yes, now it needs to occur in order for it to move forward. Now we're gonna dive in the deep end. Now the scales have been tipped. Now the scales have officially been tipped to get some process going to make the change since April 2019 be more real. And is this going to be a good process? Is this going to be a good process? Yes. <laughs> yes. Like I wholeheartedly think it is. Why? Why do I think it is? Because the new moon is in Scorpio. Okay. What is the ruler of Scorpio? Pluto. Where is Pluto? In this Saturn-Pluto mess that's been going on since April 2019, that's been hard and slow that we've been trying to change our life to be. And because Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter are all now direct and moving on very soon. They're going to be out of Capricorn really soon, <laughs> never to be back for many years after this. It's going to take another 30 years for Saturn to get back into Capricorn. And it's not going to meet Pluto then. <laughs> 
So do I think this is going to be a positive change? I do. I do. Now that Pluto is direct, Saturn is direct, now that this awful alignment, Saturn, Pluto, malefic planets is moving on, yes. Not only do I think this is going to be good because the ruler of this new moon is now direct moving forward, never to be in this mess again for a long time, but also because this new moon is in great aspect to it. Look at it. 23 degrees, Scorpio. Where Where is Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn? 23 degrees Capricorn, sextile. Water and earth, water and earth get along very well. This is a sextile. So this is not a, oh crap, my life is going to be turned upside down and I'm not going to like it. This is finally, this is finally, finally. I've been trying to get my life to change since April 2019 to be something different. I never thought it was going to happen. I never thought it was going to get there. I've been dealing with so much crap. I've been dealing for so much crap since April 2019 with people and otherwise. I never thought I was going to get here. And now we do. Now we do. Now it happens. Now, finally, we feel the scales tip in our favor. All these changes since April 2019 start to happen, not just deep, not just within our own life, deeply in person, but with our relationships, especially because I think the stuff we've been trying to work out since April 2019 for many of us has been relationship related. So not only does this stuff turn around within our own lives in a massive, deep, spiritual, emotional, internal way. It's like a total emotional makeover to be different, but also in our relationships, things turn around. Not only do our relationships finally change as well to be better, to be different, to move us forward, but also as well our money. Once we pay off some debts and rearrange our finances, our money also turns around to be better as well. Not only that, but our life becomes something better that we actually want. So this to me is like resoundingly positive what is going on at this time. Okay. So maybe before I move forward, I'm just going to repeat that to bring it all together One, once more. What I think is going on at this new moon in Scorpio is that we are finally changing our lives, stepping into the change that we've been trying to get to since April 2019 to make our lives different and better. We are finally stepping into that change after we never thought it would come, after we felt like it wouldn't, after we were in the depths of despair months ago because of what was going on in our life, it finally happens. And not only do we change internally as individuals, but things externally change as well. Our relationships change, our money changes. It all starts to come together. And the conversations are super important. The conversations that we have are super important to facilitating this, to bringing the shadows to light, to dealing with the shadows, to looking the shadows in the face and not being scared of them anymore, of our past, so that we can move on. Okay, so good. I've been waiting for this moment. I know you all have been too. This is this is the moment you've been waiting for. This is the moment you've been waiting for since April 2019, since all of 2020, and since even before that. This is the moment you've been waiting for when everything is going to start moving fast. Some of you probably don't believe me. I don't even believe myself half the time. <laughs> Some of you probably don't believe me. Some of you are like, no, 2020 has been a mess. 2020 has been so slow. Things aren't going to get moving. I'm telling you, once we get the full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini two weeks from now and that new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius, things from now until April are going to move so fast like nobody's business and your life is going to totally be something you never thought it would be. It's going to be remade. Okay. Not only is it going to be remade because this is a great new moon and because we're coming up to eclipse season, this is the start of eclipse season now, starting that cycle to the full moon, lunar eclipse in Gemini, which is next. But this is also going to be a big thing, a big catalyst, totally remaking our lives because Scorpio is also what? Scorpio is also the sign of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Sure, Scorpio has the symbol of the scorpion, right? Like that's probably what a lot of people know Scorpio as because it kind of sounds like the word scorpion. But Scorpio also has another symbol of the phoenix rising. And what are we about to be this month? The phoenix rising from the ashes, just when we thought there was nothing left in our lives, just when we thought over the, since April 2019, my life is done. I'm, I'm never going to get any better. I'm never going to have better relationships. I'm never going to get out of this mess. I'm never going to get out of the problem. Just when we thought now something rises from the ashes, totally reborn. I'm telling you, we're about to be, our life is about to take a 180 <laughs> to be something we never thought it was going to be based on the past few months and years. And it's going to happen really f fast <laughs> and it's going to be really big. Okay. I'm telling you. 
Another thing that I want to mention before I talk about the specific alignments, because there are a lot of points here that are key, is that this way that your life is going to change, this way that your life is going to change really fast between now and next April to be a 180, to be, to to be totally different than what it once was is actually going to be kind of similar to the way it once was. Okay. I know, I know that kind of sounds contradictory, but hang in there with me for a minute. The way our lives are about to change over the course of the next really six months between now and next April to be something different and better is not going to be in a totally different vein. I'm using the word different probably in the wrong way. The way that our lives are going to change to be better is going to be similar to the way they went wrong, similar to the way they went wrong in the past. So whatever area your life went wrong in, in April, 2019, it's going to improve in a similar way, not the same exact situation, not the same exact person, but it's going to improve in a similar way. Okay. Why do I say this? Before I give you more details on what that is, I say this because Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter, because they caused the problem, right? They caused the problem. Where did they cause the problem? Around 22 or 23 degrees Capricorn, all right? When they first started coming conjunct around April of 2019, now they are leaving. Now they are leaving their conjunction. And not only are they leaving their conjunction, it's ending at the same degree it started, but Jupiter is also there as well. And Jupiter brings gifts and good luck. So whatever problem you started with in April 2019, you're now going to get the healing of that problem, the gift from that problem, and being reborn through that same thing that broke you as you move on, because Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter are ending in the same place they started, which is going to be the same place in your natal chart, wherever it was. But even though we are getting the healing of those same things that have plagued us, especially since April of 2019, that healing is being delivered in a similar way, but by something or someone new or by something or someone different with the Jupiter influence joining the Saturn and Pluto. It's being healed from the same thing by something else that's kind of standing in like proxy. So what that means to me, just to give you some examples, is... um, is this. <laughs> Maybe I'll start with a romantic relationship for a minute. Um, and I'll, I'll give you quite a few examples of a lot of different things going on. But to give you a few examples, maybe I'll start with a romantic relationship. Maybe I'll start from the feminine point of view of a romantic relationship, especially seeing a lot of stuff going on with the masculine and feminine that I talked about in my last video. So I'll start there. Let's say there's a woman who has not had good relationships with men, who's been constantly abandoned by men, not understood by men, not protected, not felt like there was a safe space in that relationship since April of 2019 and most likely a lot longer. Well, now what's going to happen, I think this month, is that that woman or feminine person, maybe I'll use the feminine instead of the woman, that feminine person may experience someone that comes into her life that's masculine, not the same person that abandoned her, but someone totally new that there's no history with that says, look, I'm not going to be that one to abandon you. I'm not going to be that one to leave you. I'm not going to be that one to, to not care, to not act in integrity. I'm different. And that helps to heal some of those issues and move forward or say from the perspective of a masculine person (laughs) to give you more examples of what's going on. Say there is a masculine person who's also struggled with romantic relationships for quite some time, especially since April in 2019 before where they felt like in all their romantic relationships, the people that they would get involved with didn't respect them, didn't give them their freedom, didn't trust their ability to lead the relationship and whatever way and that masculine person meets a feminine person not the same one that caused him the problems in the past but meets a new feminine person who says I'm okay with that I will give you all the freedom I will give you all the freedom that you need to do the things that are important to you and not only will I give you the freedom that you need to do those things but I also trust I trust your decision making for your own life to lead it in whatever direction you think is best for you and to lead the relationship to lead the relationship in the way that you feel it it needs to go for the both of us as well and that feminine person saying those things and doing those things and helping the masculine 
heal, heal any damage that was possibly done to the masculinity in um, previous relationships or in previous years since April 2019 and passively onwards, helping to heal some of that damage so that he can overcome it, come out on the other side, feeling like a stronger person and creating healthier relationships from here on out. Or say that this isn't a romantic connection because not all of us are going to have romantic connections. Let's say this is a job thing. Let's say that for some of us since April 2019, we've either struggled to get jobs or find jobs that we like. And if we haven't struggled to get jobs, and let's say that we've struggled with bosses, with finding bosses at work who support, who support us, who support our things. Well, what happens now, this month, new moon in Scorpio to the new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius, is that that person who struggled to find a job now gets a new job, a new job that helps them move forward, or now finds a new boss, or steps into a new job with a better boss that helps to solve the problems. It is not the same situation. It is not the same job. It is not the same boss or the same job and boss. It is an entirely new job, an entirely new boss that finally, magically, in some way, comes in to the picture to help kind of, I don't want to say erase the wounds of the past, but heal the challenges from job and work in the past. Or say that same person, that same person that struggled making money, that struggled with a job, that struggled with a boss, say that same person forgets the job, forgets the boss, starts their own business, starts a new business, and that new business, a new thing, exchanging money with other people then becomes a success then becomes a success and helps to heal all the other problems with the job that were previously going on okay if this isn't a job thing let's say this is a family thing let's say some of you have had lots of struggles with your own family disagreements arguments with your parents or with a sibling of some sort, then what could also occur in this next month is perhaps you could start your own family. You could start your own family in some way, which then helps you to do something new to heal the old family wounds that you were born into. Or if you don't start your own family to help heal those wounds, maybe what happens is that you connect with another family around your town who takes you in as their own. If that doesn't happen, then maybe another scenario that could occur is that someone else in your family that was not a part of the conflict and was doing their own thing comes forward to help take over or to help you work through some things that it is that you need. This isn't so in that instance, this isn't the same family that you were born into that's working things out. It's you creating a new family, it's another person coming forward, it's a new family standing in as proxy to be the safe space for which you can work through these old issues. Okay, to give you another example of what is going on, let's talk about friends, friendship. Let's say some of you haven't been able to find a group of friends where you feel you fit in. Say some of you have been bullied for so many years by other people. Well, a thing that could happen now, this month, of which this new moon in Scorpio starts, is that you can then find a new group of people, not the same group of people, but a new group of people. You can connect with different, a different group of people that does value you, that does get you, that does support you, and that does help you to pursue some of the things that it is that are really interesting to you. Okay, let's say that it's not friends. Let's go a little bit heavier. Let's say that this is a, a religious situation. Let's say that what has happened since April of 2019 is that you've been trying to overcome in some way abuse, abuse by a religious leader that was a part of a religious community that you really liked at one time or that your parents really liked as well. Let's say you were trying to heal from that abuse that has been very hard to do. Well, what may happen now this month is that you may find another religious community in which that you feel as though that would never happen, in which you feel safe, that helps you to heal the old wounds from an old religious leader. If you don't join a new religious community, then maybe what happens is you um, adjust your belief systems. You adjust your belief systems about what happened to you and about your past so that you can understand it in a different and better way. If this isn't about you adjusting your belief systems, then what may also happen in that scenario this month is that you may connect with a new religious leader in the same old religious community that you were a part of that, that hurt you. And that new religious leader different but similar treats you in a much better way the exact opposite of what that old leader did so that you can heal from the abuse within your religious community and move on 
Okay, so that could also be a thing that's indicated here as well. Um, is there another example I want to give? Yeah, let's say death. Let's use an another another serious example about death. Let's say since April of 2019 and even many years prior, you've been dealing with a lot of death. A lot of people that you're close to and that you cared about have, have died, either through sickness or through other means in some way that's been really, really hard on you for quite some time. So what could happen this month is that, sure, someone else close to you could die, but someone else close to you could die in a way that allows you to honor their death, to understand the process and to see it as not so scary anymore in the way that it once was. It's still death. It's still someone dying, but now you get to heal or now you get to do it in a way that helps you heal so that you can move forward. Or if it isn't someone else passing that you get to honor and see from a different perspective how death works, um, then this could be you actually, you talk to a therapist. Maybe you talk to a therapist about some things that are going on and that therapist or that psychologist stands as a stand-in to help you process some of these things and move forward. It's not the same situation. It's not the same person. The, the old people aren't coming back. The things that are dead aren't coming back. They aren't coming back, but you have a chance to heal it with someone else standing in in order for you to move forward. And that's what I feel like is going on over the course of the next four weeks, which starts at this new moon in Scorpio, is that some something new, something or someone new, different, not what you were doing before, is going to come into your life to help you deal with these same old issues you've been struggling with for quite some time so that you can finally move past it and so that you can finally overcome it. Okay, I think that's super, super important to note about what is going on at this time. And I will say this, this thing that comes into your life that's new and different doesn't have to be a person, okay? It can be you you doing something different. It can be you pursuing a new business opportunity, you pursuing a new creative opportunity, you pursuing a new perspective in some way. It, it doesn't have to be relationship related, Okay, I want to be clear on that. But even though it does not have to be relationship related, whatever new thing comes into the picture, I do still want to let you know this still does feel like relationships are heavily indicated and like a person, no matter whether it's work, business, family, love, is involved. Why do I feel like another person is most likely involved, if not externally, then definitely in thought? I feel like another person is involved because the last Saturn and Pluto conjunction about 35 years ago was in Libra, a relationship sign. And because this new moon, this new moon is in Scorpio, also a relationship sign, while Venus is in Libra, also a relationship sign. So even though these situations don't have to involve other people, it can be you taking matters into your own hands to do new things. I do feel that for most of us, the majority of us, this is a relationship thing. Another person is going to help us with this old stuff that's going on so that we can move forward. Another person is gonna be there, especially because a lot of the things that, that go on in life, like as humans involve other people. If it's a family issue, family, there's a person families have people in them if it's a work issue we work with other people if it's a money issue we have to work with people to get money you know if it's a love issue there's a relationship involved so even though this does not have to involve a relationship some of us can take matters into our own hands i do feel like for most of us there is someone, no matter what your situation is, that's a person that you're working things out with or that's serving as a sounding board so that you can move forward and so that you can move on. I do feel that way. And I also feel, I think I made this clear, but just to say it again, I also feel as though this is a new person. This is a new person. This is someone that was not involved in the damage. This is someone that was not involved in the wreckage, in the, the train wreck of whatever the past was. This is to me is someone else. Okay, why do I believe this is someone else? Because Saturn and Pluto are involved. And what do Saturn and Pluto do? They kill everything they touch. Saturn and Pluto, they just, they're just like that. You know, I, I wish I could give you a more optimistic vision of Saturn and Pluto, but they do, they kill everything they touch. And what are they touching? They're touching all the stuff that's gone on in her life for the past 35 years. So I really don't think that this is healing through the old person, the old people, the old job that we're 
trying to escape. I don't think it's that. This to me feels like that is done. The old relationship is done. The old person you were involved with, it's done. The old boss, it's done. The old job, it's done. Or the job you're in now that you're trying to get, it's done. It's not coming back. Saturn and Pluto killed it, for real. (laughs) To me, this feels strongly like something else. I'm not saying that for some of you, someone can't come back from the past and change. Someone can't come back from the past and be changed and be remade and a job can't be reborn and a bus and all this stuff. I'm not saying that it can't happen. I understand that strange things do occur. I'm just saying that it does not feel that way to me intuitively. And that for 99.9% of us, that is not going to be the case. Okay. For 99.9% of us, I believe this is going to be a new person bringing justice to the old situations that have hurt you and broke you so that you can move on. It's a new person, a new situation coming to move you forward. And, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a heartbroken thing. I don't think that we're like, oh crap, a new person, a new job is going to like fix the old thing. I, I, I think this is a blessing. I think this is a blessing with Jupiter being conjunct Saturn and Pluto. I think this is a blessing. I think this is a happy thing. And I think we're ready. I think we're ready for the new to take over the old and to heal it. Even if we still have some things that we need to work out, you know, and why maybe, maybe that's an important thing. Why, why, Why is it going to be the same situation, but a different, a different person? Like why, you know, my opinion on that is because like, how do you know that you've really healed something? And how do you know that you've really like conquered something unless you have to face it again, unless you have to face that same thing that broke you again? and conquer it, you know? So there, there's a weird poetry to why this is happening. You know, like the universe, God, spirit, whatever you believe in is, is like, I don't know if I want to say saving you, but is saving you by the same thing that hurt you is building you up by the same thing that broke you. And it's doing it to show you that you don't have to be scared of this thing anymore, that you don't have to be haunted by it, that you don't have to be broken by it, that you're not transfigured, that you're not like, you know, that you're not, that you're not always going to be transfigured in this way that you once thought you were. Cause I see like, I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of us who are feeling broken and we, we have to be say healed by the same thing that hurt us to show that we can overcome this thing and that we, we can move on so that we don't always associate the same thing with pain and with hurt throughout the rest of our lives. And so that we can move forward dealing with other things. All right. And this is it. This is the finale, the finale to a really long life story, a really long life journey. And this is also the beginning of blessings, the beginning of the blessing for your struggle, the beginning of the blessing for your pain so that you can move forward so that you can move forward healed, more passionate, and more connected to life. And if I wanted to bring it all together, this is really all connected to that full moon in Taurus two weeks ago to whatever unexpected thing came up then, because whatever unexpected thing came up at that full moon in Taurus, I believe triggered us, triggered us because it made us realize that new situations in life are necessary and that new situations in life to make sense of and overcome all this old stuff um, is possible and is available to us. And I think realizing that we need to do something new or that something new is possible to us made us realize just how much emotional work and emotional transformation still needs to be done in order for us to to heal some of this old stuff and move on accepting these new blessings that are coming in really regardless of the outcome that's really the key point Uh, i know i just spent a lot of time in this video telling you that things are going to be good and that things are going to work out but really the whole point is to adjust your your emotions and to transform regardless of whether or not the divine feminine or masculine gets healed, regardless of whether or not you get a job or you make money or the boss works out or the family thing. The real point of this new moon is to, is to know that regardless of whatever happens, that you are fine, that you are fine, that you have broken these old 
habits and these old experiences from the past so that you couldn't go back even if you tried. Like the point of this new moon is to know and to trust that you are now vibrating on an entirely different wavelength, on an entirely different frequency than you were just a few months and years ago that you wouldn't even attract the same types of people that you used to attract, the same types of situations you used to attract, and that you wouldn't let them go the same way that they used to go. The whole point of this new moon is, is to trust and to know that you are, are different and that whether or not these situations, these new situations that I think we're about to work out, work out, <laughs> even though I think they are, the whole point is to just trust and know that regardless of what goes on, that you have broken the cycle, that you have broken the cycle and that, and that you can do things differently from here on out. Okay. So that's what I'll say. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the specific astrological alignments that this moon is making. Um, so I'll start now. Here's the new moon and Scorpio. I already talked about the sextile to Pluto, Jupiter, and Capricorn, which is huge. But now I want to talk about the trine over here to Neptune and Pisces. What is this about? Neptune and Pisces has to do with overcoming the past. So what is going on here? Huge opportunity at this new moon in Scorpio to sure change, to be different, but to overcome the past, to release the past and to let it, to let it go. So I see a lot of that, not just new situations coming in and taking over, but new situations coming in and taking over that really allow you to loosen the grip on these old things and not let them bother you as much. Well, not really let them, yeah, <laughs> not, not nearly as much as they used to. Okay, another thing that I want to mention too about Neptune and Pisces is that Neptune and Pisces is a spiritual sign and planet and is a very intuitive one. So what else can go on here as well is not only that we're letting go of the past and changing ourselves, our money, and our relationships to totally remake them and heal them through which conversations are going to be a big part of, but it's also our intuition kicking in. Our intuition is going to guide us. Our intuition is going to tell us, don't do this, do that. Say this thing, talk to this person, act this way. Like there's something inside us that's going to take over, especially with Mars being directed this time, finally, after being retrograde for like three months. And what is Mars and Aries? Aries is about our instincts, our primal instincts <laughs> as, as who we are, especially with Scorpio too, also being ruled by Mars. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Mars. So there's something about this new moon in Scorpio that's going to help us break the bonds to the past, change, transform, and heal from these old things. And our intuition and our primal instinct is going to kick in, <laughs> is going to kick in to say, hey, it's time. It's time to move on. It's time to, especially with Aries being the first sign of the Zodiac where Mars is going to be, to start anew. It is time. It's time to do it. It's time to save yourself or, or, or <laughs> through these old situations, to let these, these, not these old situations. It's time to let a new situation help the old situation go. And, and for you to, for us to allow that situation to occur. And I do, I think there's, I think we're just going to know. <laughs> I think there's a part of us that even if it comes suddenly and even if it comes unexpectedly as we get close to this new moon in Scorpio is going to be like divinely inspired and directed to do the right things or to, to do the things that need to be done, to say the things and to gravitate towards the people and things that do want to help us and that are meant for us to move forward and to let go of the ones that aren't. So I don't want to paint this new moon in Scorpio difficult at all. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing helping us to change ourselves, change our relationships, change our money, and totally remake it in a new, healthier image to heal all these old hurts. And to break the spell, you know, sometimes to me, Scorpio has to do with the spell. You know, everyone always talks on Facebook how Pluto is so mesmerizing. Pluto people, Plutonian, Scorpio people. Pluto like casts a spell over you. And we're breaking the spell. We're breaking the spell of these old things from the past that have been hard. And we're finally like accepting where we are and moving on and only accepting where we are liking it, liking it. Liking what we're starting to see manifest. <laughs> Turn into the sun in some ways, you know? I mean, to me, Aries and Scorpio are extremely sexual signs. They just, they are. So there's something about like a primal life force, sexual life force, like coming back again to get things going here. 
All right, the next thing I want to mention is Mercury at this time and Scorpio making an opposition to Uranus and Taurus. What is this about? Unexpected Uranus conversations, Mercury, and unexpected thoughts, Mercury. Are these good or bad? I think these are good. Why do I think these are good? Because this is the last time Mercury is going to be in this spot after being retrograde. It already went retrograde in this spot twice. And the last pass of a planet direct is the most helpful. It's the most helpful because it's been there, done that, experienced the problems, knows what it's going to get. So what is this about to me? Unexpected, helpful conversations and unexpected, helpful thoughts to ourselves about what? Scorpio, about relationships and some problems that may have come up in relationships at that full moon in Taurus. Okay. This is about us getting unexpected, helpful solutions, resolutions, thoughts, and conversations about ourselves and about relationships so that we can what? Let this old stuff go. Break the bonds. Break the spells of the past and let our lives turn around entirely to be what we need it to be. Maybe 180 is not it, a 360 to let our lives do what we need in order to move on. And people are helping. Sure, these conversations are deep, okay? I don't want to... I don't want to say that these conversations are easy. With Mercury and Scorpio, these are deep conversations. These are deep thoughts we're having with other people about what went wrong in the past, about what's wrong with us or what we feel is wrong, about what we don't like. But these deep thoughts and conversations are helping. They're falling on soft ears. They're falling in really supportive places in order for us to, to overcome these things, get the insights we need, and be propelled into the future. Uranus, be propelled into these other things without all the hardship bringing us down, okay? I like it. I like it a lot. I do. Is If there's any one hard thing that I can talk about that's going on during this time period, it is Venus and Libra making a square over here to Pluto, Pluto and Jupiter and Saturn. While all this is going on, this new moon in Scorpio, this is the hardest thing that's occurring. And what is this about? Well, it is a relationship thing, right? Because Venus is involved in, Venus is in its home sign in Libra, making the square over here to Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. So sure, there is some things in relationships that are hard, but I personally don't believe it's the conversations with relationships. I believe what is hard here, I believe what is hard here is not that relationships are giving us hell, right? Venus is at home in Libra. It loves to be in, people want to work with you. People want to be nice. People want to be sweet in some ways, okay, and harmonious. The problem here is that we're going to have to, do I want to say give up? Give up our old ways. Give up our old ways, and permanently make a break with the past and permanently move on. But even though that's hard, right? We got to permanently give up the old, give up the old relationship, give up the old thing, make a complete turn away from that and move forward. I'm telling you, we have so much support. We just have so much support in order to move on. <laughs> so, I mean, there are some things that could be a challenge here, talking to relationships about some things from the past and working out the emotional stuff. But and making the complete turn away from these old things into different chapters to allow more good things to come. But once you make that snap decision, I think your intuition is going to take over. A primal instinct deep within you is going to take over to rearrange things in your life, restructure your DNA, rebuild yourself from the inside out, work with relationships differently, work with money differently, and bring something vital back to your life that was missing. Bring something vital back to your life that's missing that's going to heal you in the same exact way that you were hurt, not by the same person. Not be the same thing, but in a very, very similar way so that you can move on. Okay. And now we're here. And now we're here because we've done the work. Even if it was hard, even if you didn't feel like it was happening in order to get here. And not only are we here now to get the gifts because we did the work from the past, but we're also here now to get the gifts because the old is officially dead. The old is officially dead. Not only have we done the work to make the new happen since April 2019, but we've spent enough time killing the dead so that it won't come back, so that it won't come back, so that even if we tried to have a bad relationship, so that even if we tried to have a bad job, so that even if we tried to get in with a bad boss, it just would not occur, <laughs> okay? We've spent the time in order to do it, you know? You know, a lot of people, it's so funny, you know, joke, joke on the street about COVID. Like when I'm out and about walking my dog, joke about COVID being like Groundhog Day. If you've ever seen that movie where they're like, oh, it's just like Groundhog Day. Every day is the exact same until we, we break the cycle and like do one thing different in order to get out of it. And when people tell me that on the street, I kind of laugh. I'm like, yeah, like funny. 
But deep down, I'm like, no, Saturn and Pluto since April 2019 is exactly like Groundhog Day. You know, the, the whole year has is exactly like that. The whole year has been about us trying to do the same thing over again that caused the problem time again, time and time again, over and over and over again, and it not working and it causing us problems and it feeling bad until now. Until now, the new moon in Scorpio, we make the change, we break the cycle to do things differently. And the thing that we do differently actually works because we have broken ourselves time and time again of the old thing that didn't work and can now move on. Okay. Oh, great. I dropped a bunch of cards. What I'm going to do now before I close um, is read. Read the inside degrees for this new moon and Scorpio. It's actually a pretty short one, but I do want to read it. Um just to give you a little bit more of an idea of how this will this this new moon will go. Uh, I'm going to read it online. It's called The Inside Degrees by a man named Elias Lonsdale, who is no longer alive and who channeled these um, from intuition or from spirit. Okay. What did, what does it say? I'm actually going to read 24 Scorpio for this new moon. What does it say? The proliferation of worlds reading it on a computer screen, the proliferation of worlds discovery that there is more, far more. So what that means to me is that at this new moon in Scorpio, we are realizing that we thought life was over the past few months, that we were never going to escape, that nothing good was ever going to happen to us and that we were wrong. We're realizing at this new moon in Scorpio, we were wrong. There is way more to our life, that our life is not over, that in fact, it's just beginning. And it's just beginning in a really, really good way in order to take us forward. Okay. But this is interesting. It says this, even though we're realizing that there is more, far more, there is the desperation to escape from your destiny into any one of so many worlds, an overwhelming need to deny what lives within. So what this means to me is that even though we're realizing at this new moon in Scorpio that there is so much more, that life is just beginning instead of ending, and that our story is not over, um, there's a part of us that is afraid of it. There's a part of us that wants to deny it. There's a part of us that wants to run from it. The well-practiced art of self-evasion, which is intricate and advanced. Okay, There's a part of us that's afraid, that's afraid of... that's afraid of releasing the old baggage. There's a part of us that's afraid of letting the old go. That's afraid of, I don't even know if it's letting the old go. I feel like now what we're afraid of is something really good happening. I think now we're afraid of being healed. We're afraid of feeling good. And we're trying to hide from that. I think that's what it is. We know that things are about to, to get good, that there's more that's more beautiful, and we're scared of how good it's going to be. Okay. Yet it continues. Even though we are trying to deny what is going on here, the pursuer, I quote, the destiny being is relentless and unimpressed with excuses. When tracked down and faced with everything you most fear, there begins a different journey to the heart of existence. So... There's something going on here at this new moon in Scorpio where we are stepping into a really beautiful new chapter, being healed from some of these old things by something similar that hurt us in order for us to move on. And we're excited about it, but we're terrified. We're terrified that the old is going to creep in to this new thing and be the same. And we're also terrified that it's not, that the old is not going to creep in and that this thing is going to be the thing, the thing that's going to be with us for a long time that's going to help us. But even though we're scared, destiny is not going to let us miss it. There's something destined about this time. Whatever you're doing around this time, there's something that you, do I want to say you're meant for? You were always meant for since like the beginning of time. There's something very faded about all this. Pluto, especially coming up to eclipse seasons this month has to do with destiny. It has to do with fate. It has to do with things preordained before time. Like there's something that's going on right now in the astrology that this new moon in Scorpio is heralding that was we were always meant to get here. Even if we didn't realize it, that was always meant to happen and, and that we maybe chose to happen before we were born. You know, I, mean, I, <clears throat> I do believe in that. Okay. And there's something too about this time that's meant to restore, to restore something vital to our being that was lost and to bring that back to life in order for us to move on. And, and this is just the moment when it happens and we just can't be afraid, can't be afraid to 
receive the blessings, the, the blessings that are going to start to come and be here by the new moon, solar eclipse and Sagittarius. Now your card for this time period is, or this new moon is the ace of swords reversed. Oh man, how do I feel about this? This to me, communication problems is what that is. <laughs> Leading up to a full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini. This to me is communication problems. I will say um, Scorpio is not the most communicative sign. <laughs> um, and, and this is what I feel. I do. I feel there's something going on at this new. I think there's something so massive going on at this new moon in Scorpio that we feel. Something so massive emotionally, internally, psychologically, with relationships and with money that we don't know how to talk about, that we're afraid to talk about, that's not coming out right. That's hard. And what I want to say with this card is like relationships look good. People want to work with you. You know, you got to communicate. You got to communicate about these things. You can't be afraid because the, the, the fear the fear, well, what's that phrase by one of those like famous presidents? Like there's nothing fear of fear itself. Like the things that we're afraid of is really not the response that people are going to give you because people are going to be really helpful during this time period. So if there's a part of you that doesn't want to communicate or that's afraid, it's not because of another person. It's because, because the other person's going to respond fine. The, the fear is, is you, how, how you want to say it and, and what you, and you're overthinking. So my thought about this card is some of us may avoid having conversations here because of the depth of emotion that's going on. And that's not helpful. You need to have the conversations um, and to not be afraid to say what you need to say and to not be afraid to say it in whatever way it comes out. It doesn't have to be perfect because people are going to be really helpful. You just have to get it out, get it out there. Okay. Oh, goodness. The card at the bottom of the deck is the tower, upright. How perfect is this? This is a major arcana, which indicates a major moment, okay? And the tower to me, I also correlate to Pluto and to Scorpio. In the tower to me is like major moment, major breakthroughs, major things falling apart in your life, but falling apart so that they can come together. So I'm telling you all, May, this is finally a time of what we've been waiting for. This is what we've been waiting for for so long, since April of 2019 and even many years before that. And it's finally here and it's finally going to start to happen. And it's not going to happen. You're not going to force it to happen. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen for you. And the, the, the best message I can give you is to go with the flow and to not resist the oncoming rush of whatever is going to happen and to let it all fall around you and to let it all do what needs to be done and to not be afraid to speak whatever way comes out because people are going to be helpful and people want to work with you and because people are going to have a lot of the answers that you need you know a lot of things that you've been missing people are going to have the missing pieces to help you move on so let it all happen for you and to you and and just be present, be present and be open. And you're going to realize that things are going to come together in surprisingly beautiful ways. So that is your forecast for the new moon in Scorpio. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and I'll talk to you on the next video.